On the eastern border of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, in Central Africa, lies two of the most active volcanoes of the western branch of the East African Rift. The Nyiragongo and Nyamirajara volcanoes can be found nestled imposingly at the southern end of the Virunga National Park, also known as Park National de Virunga. The park is the first national park in Africa, established by the King of Belgium in 1925 to preserve the mountain gorillas that lived in the Virunga Mountains forests. They are seated atop two tectonic steps that are divided by the Cameron's Fault and were formed at the Kivu Rift Axis some 12,000 years ago. Since the end of the 19th century, both of these volcanoes have demonstrated a series of intracrater and flank eruptions that have been seen and recorded. But why are these volcanoes becoming so popular all of a sudden? And what are the terrifying mysteries that scientists found about these volcanic fields that have got them concerned? Also, which of them just erupted? And why are researchers labeling them as some of Africa's most dangerous volcanoes? Join us in our video today as we explore the terrifying discoveries made at two of the most explosive volcanoes in Africa. Be sure to give the video a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel for more exciting future videos. Multidisciplinary studies have unearthed a rich history of volcanic activity and unrest in the densely populated East African rift system over the last two decades, providing new insights into the influence of rift dynamics on magmatism, the characteristics of volcanic plumbing systems, and the foundation for hazard assessments. The volcanoes lie on the Albertine Rift, which is the western branch of the East African Rift Valley system. Narragongo partially eclipses Baruta and Shaheru, two older stratovolcanoes in the vicinity, bringing the total number of volcanoes within the field to four. Although over a hundred parasitic cones may be seen lined along the radial gaps and fissures of the field's four volcanoes, which have been dubbed the Virunga volcanic field. However, the two main volcanoes that have drawn much attention from scientists and researchers are the Nyiragongo and nearby Namaratjura. Collectively, these two are responsible for 40% of Africa's historical and most violent eruptions. These ongoing volatile volcanic activities within the region hasn't been without effects. For one, the surrounding Lake Kivu, which is often charged with carbon dioxide from deepwater vents and methane from decomposing greenery on the lake's bottom, has been significantly impacted. Lake Kivu is one of Africa's Great Lakes, located on the border of the Democratic Republic of the Congo and Rwanda. It is a freshwater lake that, together with Lake Nios and Lake Manau in Cameroon, is one of three known to experience limnic eruptions, or lake overturning. From time to time, certain triggers can upset the chemical and thermal equilibrium of a limnically active lake or an explosive lake, causing it to overturn. This allows for the abrupt release of dissolved carbon dioxide from deep lake waters into the atmosphere, resulting in the formation of a gas cloud of carbon dioxide. Because carbon dioxide is heavier than air, it now moves downhill and completely suffocates local residents, wildlife, and livestock in low-lying areas surrounding the lake. But that's not all. As carbon dioxide rises, it generates enough force that displaces water, paving the way for a potential tsunami or sage. Scientists believe that limnic eruptions can be triggered by earthquakes, volcanic activity, and other explosive occurrences. As a matter of fact, the most recent instance of this type of lake overturn was in the Lake Nios in Cameroon in 1986. Over 1,700 residents who lived close to the lake were killed when a land slid into the lake, threw off the equilibrium, and released dissolved carbon dioxide. Another Cameroonian lake, Lake Manown, overturned back in 1984, killing 37 people. Despite this, there is no historical evidence of the lake overturning in the Lake Kivu, which is a huge relief given that Lake Kivu has more than 2 million residents living along its borders. However, 
This does not rule out the possibility of such a discharge occurring because there are signs indicating such a release during prehistoric times, and according to studies, it might still be possible once every thousand years. Lake Kivu contains a substantial amount of methane, which is identified as biogas. A number of methane extraction initiatives have been carried out, where various measures are employed to extract, separate, and treat the gases from the lake bed. This natural gas, once extracted, is used to generate power, which is then sold to local consumers. As a matter of fact, the most recent event recorded was in 2016, when a power plant produced approximately 26 megawatt of power. Both the Niragongo and Nyan Rajara volcanoes are capable of wreaking havoc, with each producing its fair share of cataclysmic eruptions since the early 20th century. However, these volcanoes are not the same. One is a low-profile volcano rising quietly from the plain, while the other has steep slopes. Nyamurajura, sometimes spelled as Nyamurajura, is an active shield volcano located about 25 kilometers north of Lake Kivu. It earns its name from the Bantu verb Karajara Naamu, which means to herd animals. Naamu means animal or cows. It has been dubbed Africa's most active volcano, possibly due to parallels to Mauna Loa in Hawaii, which is also regarded as one of the world's most active volcanoes, having erupted 33 times since its first well-documented historical eruption in 1843. Namarajura Volcano boasts of over 40 eruptions itself since 1885. Aside from some eruptions, there have been other eruptions from the volcano's sides, generating new small volcanoes that have only lived for a short time. Murara, a minor, short-lipped cinder cone on Mount Namarajura's flank that erupted from December 1976 to 1977, is one example. Namarajura has a peak with a 1 km radius and a caldera with a 100 meter depth. The base diameter of the volcano is approximately 20 kilometers, and it is nearly perfectly symmetrical, with an area of about 800 square kilometer. Because of the low silica content, the magmas of Nyamarajura have relatively low viscosity. The slopes are between 10 to 20 degrees towards the summit and shrinks to about 3 degrees near the base. The main cone has a diameter of 15 kilometers and is beautifully preserved although many parasitic cones can be seen on the volcano sides. However, what sets Nyamarajara apart from all volcanoes in the Virunga region is its unique shield volcanic structure. Every few years it erupts with lava fountains and massive fluid lava flows, traveling many kilometers into the sparsely populated area of tropical forest and agriculture surrounding it but ever since 1980, there has been an average of one eruption every two years. Nyamarajara began erupting lava flows right around dawn, on the 2nd of January 2010, and although there were no settlements around the volcano, wildlife experts were concerned that the eruption will endanger the chimps in the vicinity. There was also fear that the lava would have poured into the southern area of Viremba National Park, where there are settlements and communities. Satellite images showed extensive lava flows from the eruption spanning 25 kilometers southwest to Lake Kivu, 22 kilometers northwest, and 35 kilometers north-northeast. As the volcano's eruptions persisted, ash and gas emissions posed health risks to inhabitants. Ash contaminated drinking water from open springs and rainwater catchments in Sake, Kenji and Rusayo and health centers in these communities reported an increase in diarrhea and eye problems. People living near the volcano reported the deaths of domestic animals and crop damage. It is anticipated that 52,096 individuals were affected, including 7,901 in Mugunga, 13,000 in Rusayo, and 31,195 in Sake and Kenji. However, only a year later, Nyamurajura's greatest eruption, 
in the last 100 years happened. On November 5, 2011, the volcano erupted once more, releasing a 1,300-foot-high column of lava. The eruption began with severe earth fracturing and tall lava fountains from many vents, which immediately began to construct the western Kiminura Cone Complex. Lava flows spread many kilometers to the north, scorching extensive tracts of forest but causing minimal damage to infrastructure because the area was unpopulated. Tall fountains continued for a week before transitioning to strong spattering from active lava lake-filled vents and strombolian explosions. The eruption was originally reported by park rangers and observers in Goma could see a sky glow throughout most of the night. The eruption was triggered by a long fissure of length measured to be between 500 meters and 1,000 meters, running perpendicular to the Albertine Rift, forming a new cone. From the fissure, a lava flow traveled north through relatively flat territory. Satellite photos revealed a massive cloud of sulfur dioxide stretching west of the eruption site. For the first time in 75 years, a new lava lake erupted at the volcano in 2014. The volcano's earlier lava lake was emptied during the 1938 lava outburst. The new lake was formed between June and August of 2014. It extended down to a depth of 1,600 feet. The eruption had no effect on the local communities, although it did leave a lot of ash and air pollution. The formation of sulfate aerosols by volcanic sulfur dioxide from the eruptions was observed as far away as the central Amazon rainforest in South America. The lava lake had solidified by 2018, and the activity appeared to have ceased. In early 2017, satellite pictures revealed hotspots at Nyamarajara volcano, indicating continued eruptions. In 2022, the Nyamarajara volcano is still erupting and satellite images indicate crater hotspots. But if you think the Nyamarajara volcano is terrifying, wait until you find out about this next one, which has frightened researchers and makes volcanologists nervous every time it shows signs of life. Sitting in close proximity to the Nyamarajara volcano is the more notorious Nyaragongo, it is an active stratovolcano located in the Albertine Rift's Barunga Mountains at an elevation of 11,385 feet, about five times taller than the world's tallest man-made building, the Burj Khalifa. It lies about 12 kilometers north of the town of Goma, Lake Kivu, and a few kilometers west of the Rwandan border. It is known to have the world's fastest and most fluid lava and doubles as a home to the world's largest active lava lake. The lava lake has a wide range of depths. Prior to the January 1977 eruption, the lava lake's greatest elevation was estimated to be around 10,660 feet, with a lake depth of roughly 2,000 feet. After the eruption in January 2002, the lava lake dropped to a low of 8,500 feet or 3,000 feet below the rim. Since then, the level has gradually increased. Little is known about how long the volcano has been erupting, but it has erupted at least 34 times since 1882, including lengthy periods of continuous activity for years at a time, frequently in the manner of a churning lava lake in the crater. So why does the name of this towering spectacle strike fear and sends chills down the spine of the locals living in its vicinity? And why is it on the list of decade volcanoes, particularly those that are deadly and dangerous? The cone of Nyiragongo is made up of pyroclastics and lava flows. The lavas of Nyiragongo are low silica, alkali-rich, ultramafic extrusive rocks devoid of feldspars. Because of the extremely low silica content, the eruptions have unusually fluid flows. Whereas most lava flows move slowly and rarely endanger human life, Nyiragongo's lava flows can sprint downhill at speeds of up to 100 km per hour. With that speed, the cheetah might be the only animal on land capable of outrunning the fast-paced, searing lava, spewed by the towering Nyiragongo. 
Eruptions can also potentially spew fatal amounts of carbon dioxide gas to the surface, capable of asphyxiating masses. This is particularly concerning given that millions of people live in the volcano's shadow. Additionally, even more recently, children have died from localized carbon dioxide toxicity, a case locally known as Mazuku in the area. Without the aid of wind, the gas can have lethal consequences in areas where it seeps from the earth at relatively high levels. Factor in the region's political instability and conflict, Nairagongo becomes a very challenging volcano to monitor. Despite the best efforts of the Goma Volcano Observatory, which was established in the city that shares the same name in 1986, it has still been difficult to identify and send clear warning prior to the recent eruption. All these variables at play add to the fear and the terror that the raging mountain is capable of delivering. Mount Nirigongo is rarely tranquil and is one of the few places on the planet with a lava lake bubbling within its top crater. Two of Nairagongo's recent eruptions, in 1977 and 2002, were catastrophic. Lava flows killed between 600 and 2,000 people in 1977, according to estimates. In 2002, molten rock devastated up to a fifth of Goma, and lava covered 13% of it, displacing 120,000 people and killing approximately 250 people due to carbon dioxide asphyxiation, burns, and the lava trigger explosion of a gas station. The lake's carbon dioxide and methane reserves were at risk of being released as the lava flows made their way into it. It is believed that the lava from the 2002 eruption is a carryover lava from the mid-1990s lava lake activity. A new batch then erupted from the fissure vents in its wake. In the five days after the eruption, there was exceptional tectonic activity, with more than 100 earthquakes with magnitudes greater than 3.5. At Goma and up to 10 kilometers south along the northern lake shore, there was also land subsidence. Warnings were issued and 400,000 people were evacuated from the city across the Rwandan border into the neighboring Kisini. At Goa International Airport, lava covered the northern third of the runway, leaving the southern two-thirds usable, and it also reached Lake Kivu. This sparked concerns that the lava would, like the 1986 Lake Neos tragedy in Cameroon, force gas-saturated waters deep in the lake to abruptly rise to the surface and release lethal volumes of carbon dioxide and methane. Although this did not occur, volcanologists are still closely watching the area. Following local reports of rumblings from the volcano, Goma Volcano Observatory found a new vent that opened on the northeast margin of the crater on March 8, 2016. This raised concerns that a flank eruption could occur. Observers in 2020 also saw the lava lake increase amid other signals of an approaching eruption. They were not mistaken. Things quickly escalated late in May 2021. Fractures formed in the volcano's rocky sides, allowing fast-moving lava to gush down the side of its slopes. Some of it was directed toward Goma, a six-mile distance metropolis of about 1.5 million people. The night sky glowed crimson as lava, sometimes three stories high, rushed at breakneck speed into the streets of many villages surrounding Goma, devouring and engulfing any buildings it came across and lighting them ablaze like a locked-up demon that had been released. Lava blocked down a highway to Beni, and authorities encouraged residents of Goma to evacuate, leading thousands of people to flee their homes. Following the eruption, there was also a widespread power outage. As of May 27, 2021, 37 persons were reported missing and feared dead when a lava flow reached the outskirts of Goma. At least 32 people died as a result of the eruption, but the majority of them were killed in car accidents during the evacuation. For the time being, it appears that the raging volcano has closed its fiery mouth but just for a short time, it appears. There have been tales of rumblings and seismic activity in the belly of the volcanic beast, 
Significant earthquakes are also trembling the region, indicating turbulence below. Nyaragongo will very definitely erupt again. However, geologists are unsure when another explosion is likely to occur. Lava might completely annihilate Goma the next time. Significant amounts of carbon dioxide may overwhelm the shores of Lake Kivu if the area's underwater volcanic activity is disrupted. If the magma flows below ground, a new volcanic vent could form in the heart of the metropolis. The dangers are numerous and all around this active volcano. Goma and Gesenyi, a Rwandan city adjacent to Goma, are in near perpetual danger. However, scientists are constantly working to improve their understanding. From establishing how frequently it erupts to mapping out the anticipated future trajectories of lava flows, according to Matthew Curvin, a natural hazards expert at the Free University of Brussels in Belgium. Nonetheless, whatever the science reveals, many of the city's people, even those who live in the very last routes of the volcano's future flows, might be unwilling or unlikely to relocate. If lava were to sweep through the streets of Goma once more, it may cause millions of people enormous injury and long-lasting trauma. However, it's possible that the recent near-miss with widespread devastation may spur a new mitigation effort, resulting in more strong scientific study on the ground, more active monitoring, and updated city planning in the most vulnerable locations. If you'd enjoyed this video, watch also the next video on your screen which looks at the terrifying new ocean forming in Africa. Be sure to give the video a like, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel for more exciting future videos.